Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we will continue looking at paper two. So the first question we're going to go through is a nice cyclic quad question. As you can see, um, I really like cyclic quad questions, but that's because I like geometry. Um, so I know that some of you struggle on it, so let's go through it nice and slowly. Now it says complete the following statements. Now, these questions here, these statements here, generally are hints as to what we are going to need in the next part of the question. Okay, so let's see what it says. The opposite interior angles of a cyclic quad are what? They are supplementary. That's the first thing. They add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. A line from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the chord is perpendicular to the chord. And obviously you guys have to write out the word perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular. So there you go. There's some hints. Maybe we need them, maybe we don't. Now it says refer to the diagram. O is the center of the circle and this angle here is 140 degrees. So state whether the following statements are true or false. Angle M is 40 degrees. This angle here is 40 degrees. Okay, let us think about that. This here is 140 degrees. So in fact, this angle here would be 360 minus 140, which is going to be 220. So therefore, this angle here is actually going to be angle at center is twice the angle. This is going to be 110 degrees because this angle is at the center being subtended by LN and this angle here is the one that matches this one when it's angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. They are suggesting that angle M equals 40 degrees because they're thinking that opposite angles are cyclic quad supplementary. But L O N M is not supplementary, therefore this is not 40 degrees. Also, guys, let's get real. This really doesn't look like 40 degrees, does it? So therefore the correct answer is false. Angle Q1 is 70 degrees is, however, true because Q1 is subtended by LN and so is O. So since both of these are subtended by LN, we could say that angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference. So this is true. Now they're asking is PNMLP N M L is P N M L a cyclic quad? Yes, it is. It's got four sides. One, two, one, two, three, four, and you've got four points that are all on the circumference. So it is true. Then it says that angle P two is equal to angle M. Angle P2 is equal to angle M. Okay, so let's think about this. If this is a cyclic quad, then do you agree that this angle here is 70 degrees? But we knew that anyway because of the fact that opposite angles are supplementary, but also that this is subtended by this. Now they're saying that P2 equals M. So they're saying just angle P2 equals M. For that to be the case, just a second, I'm just having a look at this. Um, P2, I'm going to say it's false, but let me just show you why. Oh, the reason being that they're thinking that the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle, but it needs to be on a straight line. So P2 is not equal to M, so the answer for this is false. Right, now let us do this next question. It says, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle and TP is the diameter, which means that this line is equal to this line, which equals this line. When I say this line, I mean just OS. I don't mean the whole of it, OR, I just mean OS. And these are all radii, do you agree? PR is a tangent to the circle, so therefore that's 90 degrees. 
and T1 equals 23 degrees. Calculate this as R1, giving reasons. Okay, so do you agree that this angle, yeah, is going to be 46 degrees? Okay, angle O2 equals 46 degrees. Why? Angle at the center equals two times, two times angle at the circumference. And this is 23 degrees and it's subtended by P and S. O is also subtended by P and S, but it's at the center, so that's 46 degrees. Angle P1 is equal to 90 degrees, and that is the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. And therefore, R1 is going to be 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus 46 degrees. And that's just angle sum of triangle. Therefore, it's equal to 90 degrees minus 46 degrees, which is 47 degrees. There you go. So R1 is 47 degrees. Hmm, nice question. Right, now moving on to some trigonometry. It says simplify without the use of a calculator. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my cast diagram. All stations to Cape Town. It says, okay, so you've got sine of 180 plus alpha, tan of alpha minus 180, cos of 180 plus minus alpha, minus sine of 90 minus alpha, cos of negative alpha. Okay, fine. So let's, that's not going to work at all. So we can dark blue. So you've got sine of 180 plus alpha, which is in this quadrant. So that means it's a negative. So it's going to be minus sine of alpha. Tan of alpha minus 180 degrees. Well, if you take alpha to be up here and you subtract 180 degrees, we get into the tan quadrant. So if that's positive, so that's just tan alpha. Cos of 180 minus alpha is in this quadrant and cos is negative in that quadrant, so it's just cos of alpha minus sine of 90 minus alpha is a co-ratio with cos alpha. And then cos of minus alpha is in the fourth quadrant and it's positive, so that's just cos alpha. Right, so do you agree that I can change this tan alpha to sine alpha over cos alpha? So I have minus sine alpha over sine alpha over cos alpha multiplied by cos alpha minus cos squared alpha. So do you agree this cancels with this? And sine divided by sine is one. So I'm left with minus one minus cos squared alpha. But we know the couple of things. We know that first of all, that sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha equals one. Therefore, cos squared, oh, sorry, one minus cos squared alpha is equal to sine squared alpha. So another way we could do this is that we could replace sine squared um, one with cos sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. So let's do that. It might be easier. Minus one becomes minus sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha minus cos squared alpha, which becomes minus sine squared alpha minus two cos squared alpha. Um, I'm just thinking if I can't make it, whoopsie, what happened there? Hello. Oh, my computer's having a nervous breakdown. Hmm. I don't know what it's doing. Let's just get rid of that. The, the keep. And then... How weird. Sorry, let's try again. Hmm. 
we get <clears throat> just a second i think i'm gonna make a mistake minus sine alpha the sine of 180 plus alpha is minus sine alpha tan of alpha minus 180 is tan alpha cos of 180 minus alpha is negative oh there we go there's no mistake that's plus so therefore this becomes one minus cos squared alpha which is just sine squared alpha there you go much better hey yeah i thought so okay so let's go back here quickly and just let's erase that writing because i need i need i need i need delete space for the next question so then we can go from the current side and we're going to erase all this. Okay, let's do this one. So again, we need the cast diagram or stations to Cape Town. We've got sine of 190, cos of 225, tan of 390, cos 100, and sine of 135. Okay, so I'm going to try something. I don't know what, and that's the whole you, the way you do these things. So I'm going to take sine of 180 plus 10 degrees. Cos of 225, if we get out our calculator, we can see that that is either, okay, where it's 225 minus 180. Ugh. 225 Minus one eight is forty five degrees. So do you agree that's the same as cos of one hundred and eighty plus forty five degrees? Then we've got tan of three sixty plus thirty degrees all over cos of a hundred. Now cos of a hundred is the same as ninety plus ten. And sine of 135 is sine of 180 minus 45. Hmm. So sine of 180 plus 10 is the same as negative sine 10. Cos of 180 plus 45 is going to be negative cos 45. Tan of 360 plus 30 is just tan of 30 all over the reason that's just positive is because that's basically in the first quadrant we've got 30 degrees and then we go all the way around the 360 plus yeah. three back where we started which is why it's just 10 30. cos of 180 plus 45 puts it in the third quadrant therefore cos is negative so it's negative cos 45 Similarly, sine of 180 plus 10 just becomes sine of 10, but it's negative because it's been put in the third quadrant. Cos of 90 plus 10 is going to give us negative sine 10 because of the co-ratio. And then finally, we've got sine of 180 minus 45, which is going to be in the second quadrant. So therefore, that's just sine of 45. Right, so minus divided by minus is a plus divided by minus is a minus that's a minus these happily fall away now we need our special triangles okay that's one one root two and that's 45 and then we need the special triangle with 60 30 to one root three so sine of 45 is opposite of our partners, which is 1 over root 2. Cos of 45 is adjacent to our partners, which is 1 over root 2. So they effectively cancel each other out. So we're left with minus tan 30. Tan of 30 is opposite over adjacent. So therefore, it's negative 1 over root 3. And there you go, we're done. Nice question. In the diagram, PQRS is a parallelogram. PQRS is a parallelogram. P is the point minus 2, 5. S is the point 4, 6. Q is on the x-axis, okay? And R, we don't know, but the equation of the line RS, RS is 2Y 
is equal to minus x plus 6. Okay, that's the equation of that line there. So first of all, the si determine the size of Q1 correct to a one decimal digit. Okay, so they're quite sneaky when they came across this question because they first of all, they tell you it's a parallelogram, right? So this here, even though it doesn't look like a parallelogram, is a parallelogram. What do we know about parallelograms? We know that the opposite sides of parallelograms are not only equal, but they are parallel, parallel, right? So therefore, the gradient of this line here, RS, is going to be the same as the gradient QP, right? And the gradient of RS can be worked out. We can go Y is equal to minus a half X plus three, okay? So that is the gradient. The minus of half is the gradient of this line here. Let me just check the line R S yes, I'm right. So that's the same gradient. So therefore we can say that M of Q P is equal to negative a half, but that is equal to tan theta, where theta is the angle that the line makes with the horizontal. So therefore we can say shift tan of 0.5, remember what I said to you about minuses, okay, and that gives us 26.57 degrees. So if a theta equals 26,57 degrees, and you can see that that is the size of this angle. So that is 26, it says one decimal place, so it's 26.6 degrees. There you go. Now it says determine the equation of PQ in the form Y equals MX plus C. So we already have that Y is minus a half X plus C. Okay, we've got that that's a minus a half. Now we need to find the C value. We can do that by substituting in the point minus two five. So when Y is five, we've got minus a half times by minus two plus C. So therefore minus times minus is a plus and a half times two is one. So we've got five is equal to one plus C. So C is going to equal to four. So that point there is four. Okay, so therefore we got the equation of this line, which is y is equal to minus a half x plus four. Now it says determine the coordinates of point Q. Well, if you know, we can do this, point Q can be worked out in two ways. The one way of working out point K is to say, well, since this, we know what the equation of this line is, we can work out how far, we can work out that when x is zero or when y is zero and find those points, okay? But, but there's another way we can do it. And that is saying, okay, fine, we know this thing is a parallelogram. So let's relate these two points to get this point here, okay? Do you agree I had to go, how far? I had to go, yeah, that's not gonna work. I have to use this equation. So this is going to get y is equal to minus a half x plus 4, okay? So therefore, we're going to let y be 0. So we're going to say, okay, fine, in that case, we've got 0 is equal to minus a half x plus 4. Therefore, we've got minus 4 is equal to minus a half x. Therefore, x is equal to 8. So that point there is going to be 8 something. Now we need the y value. We substitute um, 8 into, well, obviously the y value is 0, so that's just stupid. So therefore, you can say, yay, we've sorted it out. The coordinates of Q are 8, 0. Yay, cool. Now it says, determine the center and radius of a circle with the equation x plus 2 minus 12 is equal to 4y minus y squared. So yeah, they've kind of been sneaky. They've, it's kind of a completing of the square, but it's been half done. 
we have got, if I take everything onto the one side, I've got y squared minus 4y plus x plus 2 squared is equal to 12. I've just really made this the positive in the subject of the formula and taken this across and left the 12 by itself. This already is in the format you want. Okay, we just have to get this into the format of the completing the square. Excuse me. So therefore we can say, well, in that case, we've got y squared minus 4y. And what do we do? We halve it and square it. Plus 4 divided by 2 is 2 squared plus x plus 2 squared is equal to 12. We don't mess with this because it's already been done. So we take the square root of the first value, which is 1, with y. We take the value, I mean the sign of this term is minus, and we take the square root of this, which is 2, all squared plus x plus 2 squared is equal to, and then what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. And what I need to do is add, what did I do here? Yeah, I added 4. So I actually need to add 4 here as well. So 612 plus 4 is 16. So the center of the circle is going to be minus 2, 2. And the radius is going to be 4. So I hope you understand that. Okay, the center of the circle is minus 2 because the x value in the bracket is um, 2 and the y value is 2 and then finally the radius is the square root of this which is 4. Now it says determine the equation of the tangent to the circle at the point 2, 2. Okay, so basically what we've got is we've got a circle which has a centered x equals minus 2 minus 2y is 2, okay, and it has some radius, okay, and it says at this point x equals 2, 1, 2, y equals 2, so there's some possible, this is possibly the radius, okay, and it says, and it's a horrible drawing, I know, um, let me just fix it a little bit, okay, Make that the center of the circle. Okay, do you agree that that's 90 degrees? So if we've got the center circle and we've got the point, do you agree we can find the gradient of this line here, right? Which is the line from the center circle to the tangent. Then we can actually convert that to the equation of the tangent with the gradient. And we have a straight line. It needs a gradient and a point. We'll have the gradient, we'll have the point, and then we can find out the equation. So let's do that. So we're going to go M of OC, where this is the center of the circle O, and that's C, the point on the circumference, is going to be the center of the circle. We're going to call, this is going to be minus 2, 2. And this point here is 2, 2, OK? Um, so the gradient is gained, I mean, yeah, the gradient is going to be y2, which is 2, minus, oh, that's interesting, the y value is 2. So do you agree that, hmm, it's actually a lot easier than I thought. Let me just fix this. Okay, if the y value is 2 both times, How is that working? Determine the equation of the tangent to the circle. So I just have to think a little bit. <laughs> I took the positive and then that became negative and that stayed and that became positive when you took it across. That's all very perfect. Okay, and then so this point here, it's x minus 2, y is 2. This point is x is 2, y is 2. So if that's the case, then the tangent is going to be this 
which is just going to be the point where x equals 2. There you go. Okay, let me show you what I'm saying. What I'm saying. I'm saying that if this point here is minus 2, 2, and the equation is meeting at the tangent 2, 2, okay, therefore we know that the gradient of this is going to be 0, which means the gradient of this is undefined, which means the line just has x values at x equals 2. Hmm, nice question. Right, now... If sine squared 25 is m, without the use of a calculator, calculate the value of cos 20, cos 70, plus sine 20, sine 70 in terms of m. Okay. So we got cos of 20. I don't know why I'm putting in brackets. Let me just... Okay, so we've got... Cos... 20 um, cos 70 plus sine 20 sine 70 okay and they want that in terms of m they want that in terms of m since we've already got since we've already got the Sorry, just give me a second. Um, there we go. Okay. So we've already got that sine squared 25. Sine squared 25 equals m. Okay. But now, this is cos 20, cos 70, plus sine 20, sine 70. So this is a cos, cos rule, which means that with a... So it's going to be cos of 70 minus 20, which is cos of 50. So somehow we need to relate the cos of 50 with sine squared 25. Okay, now let's just think about this. Cos 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a, which is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1, which is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. So I think I'm going to use this and I'm gonna say, okay, fine. If we know that cos of 50 is equal to one minus two sine squared 25, but they tell us that sine squared 25 is m, I can rewrite this as one minus two m. There you go. That's it. Okay, so the tricky thing was realizing that this was a Coco sine sign and converting it, and then realizing that this was a double angle and then converting that. Right. We've got triangle KLM. KM is five units, LM is three units, and K is X. L is 2x and x is less than 45 and greater than 0. So somewhere between 0 and 45 degrees. So it's calculate the value of x, giving your answer correct to one decimal place. Okay, what about if we used the sign rule? Okay, this angle here is obviously 180 degrees minus 3x. Do you agree? Um, right, so if we use a sine rule, we could say A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, right? So we could say angle at length is 5 over sine X is equal to 3 over sine 2X. Okay, do you agree with that? Then let's cross multiply, shall we? So we can go five, no, wait. Yeah, sine two X over sine X. I've just put this up here. Is equal to three over five. Okay, and I've just put that down there. Okay, problem solved. Now sine two X can be written as two sine X cos X. Right, which is also all over sine x, 
which is 3 over 5. So that cancels with that, which means we've got 2 cos x is equal to 3 over 5. So we can divide both sides by 2. And we get cos x is equal to 3 over 10. Right, and now we just get out our calculator. So let's get out the calculator. And we go shift cos of 0 0.3 close bracket equals. And we get 72.54 degrees. 72x is equal to 72,54 degrees. Okay, but do you remember that, that there is a reference angle? Let me just check if I've got this right. 5 over 2x sine 2x is equal to 3 over sine x. Oh, that's where I made my mistake. Oh, sorry guys, silly mistake. Okay, let's try again. It's 5 over sine 2x is equal to 3 over sine x. That's better. So now we can say that we've got, okay, so it's 5 over sine 2 x is equal to 3 over sine x. So we can say, okay, fine, that's fine, because then we've got 5 divided by 3 is equal to sine 2 x over sine x. Okay, all we're doing is crossing these two. We're just times in this, dividing this, times in this side by 1 over 3, and we're times in this side by sine 2 x, and that by sine 2 x as well. So before we've got 5 over 3 is equal to 2 sine x cos x over sine x. Again, so therefore this cancels with this. So therefore we've got 5 over 3 is equal to 2 cos x. So we're going to divide both sides by 2 and we get 5 over 6 is equal to cos x. Therefore x is equal to, so we're going to go shift cos, so we're going to go shift, let's just clear this, shift cos of 5 over 6. Hmm. equals 33.56 degrees. That's much better. 33,56 degrees. There you go. Nice question that. Very, very, very nice question. Right, and back to circle geometry. Okay, so it says, using the given diagram proved by filling in the spaces, the theorem that says the angle between the tangent to the circle and the chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So they're actually being really nice here. They're basically, a part of your requirement is that you actually know how to prove this. But what they've been doing is they're being very nice and they're allowing you to um, just fill in the bits to prove this theorem. So if we say that, we can say the angle between the tangent to the circle and the chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So we've got a circle, center O, okay, so that's obviously 90 degrees, just saying. An EPT is a tangent, PB is a chord, PB is a chord, and A is on the major segment. And it says required to prove that angle P2 is equal to A. Okay. First it says draw diameter PC and draw CB. Done. Now it says proof P1 plus P2 is equal to 90 degrees. And the reason is because a tangent and a radius are always perpendicular. Then we know that angle CB uh, P, CBP, CBP, okay, so we know that that's 90 degrees. Okay, CBP is equal to 90 degrees, okay, and the reason for that is angles in a semicircle. Um, 
Therefore, what do we know? Okay, we know that's 90. I'm beginning even the other angles. We've got P2. Angles of a triangle. Therefore, P2 is equal to C. P1 plus T, P2 equals 90. Agreed. Our angles in a semicircle. Angle C, B, P is equal to 90 degrees. Oh, therefore we can say, look, that this is going to be equal to X, right? Because, oh, hang on, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. We can say, we can say that angle C is going to equal angle B minus P1, angle B minus P1. Okay, we've got angles in a triangle. Therefore, P2 is also equal to C. Therefore, P2. But, but, um, P2 is equal to C, right? So that's X. And then that would be X as well. And, yeah. Okay, right. Then I say, but... Um, do you agree that this x is an angle between the tangent and the chord and it's subtend angle c therefore p2 is also equal to a um, so you could also say that but angle c equals angle a equal angles subtended by same arc. Therefore, these two are also equal. Okay, nice. Now it says, complete the following statement. The exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. Okay, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. So we know that that's a radius and that's a radius, okay? Of the circle H-E-A-T-R. O-A-F is parallel to E-H. Okay, we can see that. H-A-T-R. H-A-T-R is a cyclocard. We can see that. F2 is 78 degrees, so this bit here is 78 degrees, and R1 is the single year, is 22 degrees. Okay, calculate with reasons the size of angle O. Huh. Okay, now they've told us that this is parallel. Okay, since, do you agree that AF is parallel to EH? Okay, so AF is parallel to EH. Therefore, angle H, the whole of it, angle H1 and 2, is equal to 78 degrees, and the reason is corresponding corresponding angles, EH parallel to AF, right? So therefore, the whole of that is 78 degrees. But the angle at the center is twice the angle of circumference, therefore, angle O1 is going to be 2 to 16, that's going to be 156 degrees. Why? Because the angle at the center equals two times the angle at circumference. And you know what, we're actually going to stop there right now because it's the end of the lesson. We will carry on with this on Monday. Have a great weekend. Cheers.